Welcome to Caged Reality. This is part two of the story, The Black Book, Unleashing the Secrets of Consciousness with D.A.N. Go check out the first video on this channel for part one. Please stay until the end of this as there is a lot of great information here. It's your host Gwyneth Paltrow and as always sit back and enjoy. We have some other guest hosts too, so stay tuned. Once upon a time, there was a seeker named D.A.N. who had a burning desire to uncover the secrets of the ancient traditions of alchemy and Freemasonry. D.A.N. had studied and practiced for many years and had finally reached the highest level of initiation. As D.A.N. delved deeper into the teachings, he discovered that there was much more to the symbolism and magic than he had previously realized. He saw that each symbol represented a key to unlocking a deeper understanding of the mysteries of the universe. The alchemical processes were not just about transmuting base metals into gold but were also about transforming the self, purifying the soul, and achieving spiritual enlightenment. As D.A.N. continued on his journey, he encountered others who were also seeking the truth. They shared their knowledge and experiences, and together they uncovered many of the hidden meanings behind the symbols and rituals. They learned that the journey of self-discovery was a never-ending process, and that the deeper they went, the more there was to uncover. D.A.N. and his companions came to understand that the true power of the symbols and magic lay not in the external world, but within themselves. They discovered that the ultimate goal was not just to acquire knowledge but to embody it and become the living embodiment of the teachings. A dream within a dream. Imagine a young man named Jack who has always been interested in the esoteric and mystical. He discovers that his grandfather was a high-ranking Freemason and decides to investigate further. After some research and networking, Jack is invited to attend a Masonic Lodge meeting. During the meeting, Jack is struck by the symbolism and rituals performed by the Masons. He begins to understand that the outer trappings of the organization are merely a facade for a deeper spiritual practice. Through his interactions with the members of the Lodge, Jack learns about the principles of brotherhood, morality, and charity that underpin Freemasonry. As Jack delves deeper into the teachings of Freemasonry, he discovers that the organization is steeped in ancient wisdom and esoteric knowledge. The symbols and rituals that he initially found intriguing are revealed to have deep symbolic meaning related to the human psyche and spiritual development. Jack also learns that the Masonic organization is organized around a hierarchical structure, with members progressing through various degrees of initiation. Each degree involves a deeper understanding of the organization's teachings and principles. The inner workings of Freemasonry involve a commitment to personal and spiritual growth, as well as a dedication to the betterment of society through charitable works. The organization provides a community of like-minded individuals who share a common interest in self-improvement and service to others. As Jack progresses through the degrees of initiation, he becomes more deeply immersed in the esoteric teachings of Freemasonry. He learns to see the world through a different lens, one that emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things and the importance of living a virtuous and meaningful life. As Jack delved deeper into the inner workings of Freemasonry, he found himself initiated into the highest degrees of both the York Rite and Scottish Rite. These degrees were shrouded in mystery and required years of dedicated study and practice to attain. In the York Rite, Jack was initiated into the Royal Arch Degree, which revealed the lost secrets of the Temple of Solomon. He learned about the mystical properties of the Ark of the Covenant and the significance of the building's architecture. The degree symbolized the spiritual journey of a Freemason, from the profane world to the divine realm. In the Scottish Rite, Jack was initiated into the 33rd degree, the highest degree in the Rite. This degree explored the concept of human enlightenment and the quest for divine knowledge. It also delved into the mystical properties of the Kabbalah and the hidden meanings behind ancient texts and symbols. As Jack continued his journey within the Freemasonry, he gained a deeper understanding of the inner workings of the organization. He learned about the complex hierarchy and the various roles that members played within the society. He discovered the power of the Masonic network and the influence that it held over society and politics. Despite his newfound knowledge, Jack remained committed to the values and principles of Freemasonry. He used his knowledge and influence to better society, promoting the ideas of brotherhood, charity, and morality. And as he continued to grow and learn within the organization, he realized that the true power of Freemasonry lay not in its secrets but in the goodness and integrity of its members. Jack had undergone a transformative journey during his years of studying the York Rite and Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. As he progressed through the degrees, he discovered deeper hidden meanings in the symbols and rituals that had previously eluded him. He found himself drawn to the esoteric teachings of the craft and spent countless hours in study and meditation, delving ever deeper into the mysteries of the craft. Hey, give me a second. Now Professor Persiner from across the pond will take over. Here is a list of what Jack learned during his time in the York Rite and Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. 1. 
the true nature of the divine, Jack came to understand that the divine is not some distant, a noble force, but rather something that resides within each of us. He learned to tap into this divine energy through meditation and ritual, and found that it brought him a sense of peace and fulfillment that he had never experienced before. 2. The Power of Symbolism Jack learned that symbols are more than just pictures or words. They are gateways to deeper understanding and can be used to tap into the collective unconscious. By meditating on the symbols of the craft, he was able to gain insights into the mysteries of life and the universe. 3. The Importance of Community Jack discovered that Freemasonry is not just a collection of individuals, but a brotherhood. He found a sense of belonging and camaraderie among his fellow Masons, and learned that by working together, they could achieve great things. 4. The Value of Self-Improvement Jack learned that the true goal of Freemasonry is not to accumulate wealth or power, but rather to improve oneself. He discovered the importance of self-reflection and self-discipline, and found that by working to become a better person, he could make a positive impact on the world around him. 5. The Universality of Truth Jack discovered that the truths he had learned in Freemasonry were not exclusive to the craft, but rather universal. He realized that the same principles that guided the craft could be found in many other spiritual traditions and philosophical schools of thought. As Jack delved deeper into the mysteries of Freemasonry, he began to understand that the true power of the craft lay in the inner workings of the mind and spirit. The symbols and rituals were merely tools to unlock the deeper aspects of the self. He learned that the square represented earthly, physical reality, while the compass represented the spiritual, immaterial realm. The combination of the two represented the harmony and balance necessary to achieve true enlightenment. Through his study of alchemy, Jack came to understand that the transformation of lead into gold was a metaphor for the transformation of the self from base, materialistic desires to spiritual enlightenment. In the Royal Arch degree, Jack learned that the search for truth and knowledge is a journey that requires perseverance and dedication. The use of passwords and symbols serves to remind the initiate of the importance of secrecy and discretion in the pursuit of wisdom. As he progressed through the York Rite and Scottish Rite degrees, Jack gained a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of all things and the importance of using his newfound knowledge for the betterment of humanity. Jack stood in awe as he absorbed the immense knowledge he had acquired through his years of dedicated study and initiation into the various degrees of Freemasonry. He now understood that the symbols and rituals of the craft held a much deeper meaning than what was apparent on the surface. He had learned that the square compass and the letter G symbolized the importance of balancing the physical and spiritual aspects of life. The square represented the physical world, while the compass represented the spiritual world. The letter G represented God, the great architect of the universe, and the ultimate source of balance and harmony. Through the York Rite, Jack had learned the secrets of the Royal Arch, which symbolized the rebuilding of the Temple of Solomon and the journey of the soul from darkness to light. He had also learned the deep esoteric meaning of the pillars of Jachin and Bose, which represented the duality of creation and the balancing of opposites. In the Scottish Rite, Jack had been initiated into the High Degrees, where he had learned the true meaning of the apron which symbolized the purity and innocence of the soul. He had also learned about the importance of the number 33, which represented the highest level of spiritual attainment. As Jack continued his journey through Freemasonry, he realized that the true goal of the craft was not just to acquire knowledge and power, but to use it for the betterment of humanity. He became dedicated to the principles of brotherhood, charity, and truth and used his knowledge and influence to help others. Years later, Jack became a revered and respected member of the Masonic community. He was known for his wisdom and compassion, and his dedication to the craft inspired many to follow in his footsteps. Through his journey, Jack had discovered the true power of the esoteric knowledge hidden within the symbols and rituals of Freemasonry. He was initiated into the Royal Arch degree and learned about the symbolism of the Temple of Solomon. He learned that the Temple of Solomon represents the human body, 
and the building of the temple represents the process of spiritual evolution, Jack was also introduced to the deeper meanings of the symbols and rituals of the York Rite and Scottish Rite degrees. He learned that the symbols and rituals were not just superficial, but had deep esoteric meanings that were designed to aid the initiate in their spiritual journey. For example, the three pillars in the York Rite symbolize wisdom, strength, and beauty, and are meant to represent the different aspects of the divine. Jack also learned about the importance of moral and ethical behavior in Freemasonry. He was taught that Masonry is not just a set of rituals and symbols, but a way of life that emphasizes the importance of living a virtuous and just life. This was exemplified in the story of Hiram Abiff, who refused to compromise his integrity and was willing to die rather than reveal the secrets of Freemasonry. Furthermore, Jack was introduced to the concept of the great architect of the universe, which represents the divine creator of all things. He learned that masonry is not a religion, but rather a system of moral and ethical teachings that seeks to unite people of all faiths and creeds under a common goal of improving themselves and society. As Jack progressed through the degrees of Freemasonry, he realized that the true secrets of Freemasonry were not hidden in some arcane knowledge or hidden rituals, but rather in the personal transformation that takes place when one truly lives by the principles of Masonry. The true secret of Masonry, he learned, was not something that could be taught or learned through intellectual study, but rather something that must be experienced through the heart and soul. D.A.M. began to understand the true significance of the symbols and rituals used in the craft. He learned that the tools of the mason, the compass and the square were not merely physical instruments, but represented spiritual principles. The compass, with its ability to draw circles, symbolized the infinite and divine nature of God, while the square represented morality and the importance of living a just and upright life. As he progressed through the degrees of the York Rite and Scottish Rite, Jack learned about the deeper meanings of the various symbols used in Freemasonry, such as the all-seeing eye, the blazing star, and the tetragrammaton. He came to understand that these symbols were not mere decorations, but had profound spiritual and philosophical significance. The A.N. also learned about the importance of the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom, and how this quest was at the heart of the Masonic tradition. He learned about the ancient wisdom of the East, the teachings of the Kabbalah, and the hermetic principles of alchemy and magic. As he progressed further in the Scottish Rite, Jack was introduced to the esoteric teachings of the higher degrees, including the teachings of the Knights Templar and the Rosicrucians. He learned about the mystical significance of the number 33, and how it represented the culmination of spiritual evolution. Through his studies and initiations in Freemasonry, Jack came to understand that the true purpose of the craft was not merely to impart knowledge, but to transform the individual and help them reach their full potential as a human being. He learned that the true secrets of Freemasonry were not hidden in some obscure text or ancient artifact, but were found within the individual themselves, as Jack progressed through the degrees of the York Rite and Scottish Rite, he learned many deep and esoteric meanings about the symbols and rituals of Freemasonry. Here are some of the key things he learned. 1. The square and compasses represent the tools of the architect, but also symbolize the duality of nature and the need to find balance between opposing forces. 2. The pillars of Jachin and Bose represent strength and stability, but also serve as a reminder of the importance of balancing opposites. 3. The all-seeing eye represents the divine presence and the ability to see beyond the physical realm. 4. The symbolism of death and rebirth in the ritual of the third degree emphasizes the idea of spiritual transformation and the cycle of life, death and rebirth. 5. The use of sacred geometry and numerology in Masonic symbolism emphasizes the idea of cosmic order and the interconnectedness of all things. 6. The importance of secrecy and confidentiality in Masonic rituals and teachings reflects the idea that some truths can only be fully understood by those who have undergone certain experiences or initiations. 7. 
The use of allegory and metaphor in Masonic teachings serves to convey deeper meanings and truths that may be difficult to express directly. As Jack continued his journey, he realized that the principles he learned through Freemasonry and alchemy could be applied to his daily life. He began to see the world in a different light and approached every situation with a newfound perspective. When faced with challenges, Cage would remember the symbol of the eye and how it represented the all-seeing eye of God. He would use this visualization to tap into his intuition and gain a deeper understanding of the situation. By doing so, he was able to make wiser decisions and navigate through difficult times with ease. The A.N. also utilized the principles of transmutation in his life. When faced with negative emotions or situations, he would use his knowledge of alchemy to transmute the energy into something positive. This allowed him to stay grounded and centered, even in the midst of chaos. As Jack continued his journey, he encountered many other individuals who were also seeking knowledge and enlightenment. He shared his insights with them and helped guide them on their own journeys. Together, they formed a community of like-minded individuals who were dedicated to living a life of purpose and meaning. As Jack continued his journey of exploration and learning, he realized the importance of documenting his experiences and insights. He started keeping a notebook, where he recorded everything he learned about the secrets of the universe, the mysteries of life and death and the methods to achieve enlightenment and transformation. Here are some of the things Jack wrote down in his notebook. 1. The importance of meditation. Jack realized that the key to unlocking the secrets of the universe was through stillness and silence. He developed a daily meditation practice that helped him clear his mind, connect with his inner self, and tap into the infinite wisdom of the universe. Two. The power of intention, Jack learned that his thoughts and emotions had a direct impact on his reality. He began to set clear intentions for what he wanted to manifest in his life and used visualization techniques to align his thoughts and feelings with his desires. 3. The Alchemy of Transformation Jack delved deep into the ancient teachings of alchemy and discovered that the process of transformation was not just about turning lead into gold, but about transforming one's inner self into a higher state of consciousness. He began to apply the principles of alchemy in his daily life, using them to transmute his negative thoughts and emotions into positive ones. For the magic of symbols, Jack learned that symbols had a profound impact on the subconscious mind and could be used to access deeper levels of understanding and meaning. He studied the symbols of various cultures and traditions and began to incorporate them into his daily life, using them as reminders of his spiritual journey and the infinite possibilities of the universe. 5. The importance of service. Jack realized that true fulfillment came not from personal gain, but from serving others and making a positive impact in the world. He dedicated himself to helping others, using the knowledge and wisdom he had gained to inspire and empower those around him. Jack's notebook also contained the secrets of telepathy, which he had learned during his studies of the esoteric arts. Through his studies, he discovered that the mind was capable of much more than he had ever imagined, and that the ability to communicate telepathically was not only possible but also practical in many situations. To practice telepathy, Jack developed a series of exercises that helped him to develop his psychic abilities. He began by focusing his mind on a particular thought or image. Then he would attempt to send that thought or image to another person who was receptive to his message. One of the most effective techniques he developed was to visualize a beam of light connecting his mind to the other person's mind, like a mental telephone line. He would then concentrate on sending his message through this beam of light, using his imagination to visualize the message being transmitted from his mind to the other person's mind. Over time, Jack became more skilled at telepathy, and he found that he was able to send and receive messages with greater clarity and accuracy. He used this ability to communicate with others in situations where speaking aloud was not possible or appropriate, and he found it to be a valuable tool in his daily life. 
In his notebook, Jack recorded all of his techniques and observations on telepathy, along with detailed descriptions of his experiences and insights. He hoped that others who were interested in developing their own psychic abilities would find his notes helpful and inspiring. After mustering the basics of telepathy, Jack delved deeper into the technique and discovered more advanced ways to communicate through thought. One technique he developed was called mental broadcasting, which involved projecting his thoughts outwards to a group of people rather than focusing on sending a message to a specific individual. This technique required a high level of mental focus and control, as well as a deep understanding of the intended audience's thought patterns and emotional states. Another technique Jack developed was the use of visualization and imagination to enhance his telepathic abilities. By visualizing a clear mental image of the person he wanted to communicate with and focusing his thoughts on that image, Jack found that his telepathic messages became more focused and powerful. Jack also discovered the power of using telepathy in conjunction with other forms of magic and alchemy. By combining his telepathic abilities with meditation, visualization, and energy work, Jack was able to amplify his intentions and manifest his desires more effectively. Jack's notebook contained many advanced techniques for telepathy, but the most powerful and difficult one to master was called the Deep Mind Merge. This technique involved synchronizing the brainwaves of two individuals to achieve a deep level of mental connection, allowing them to share thoughts, emotions, and even memories. To perform the Deep Mind Merge, Jack had to first establish a strong rapport with the other person through deep listening and empathy. Then, he would guide both their minds into a state of deep relaxation and meditative focus, using breathing techniques and visualization to synchronize their brainwaves. Once their brainwaves were in sync, Jack would begin to gently guide the other person's thoughts and emotions towards the desired outcome, whether it be a shared vision, an exchange of knowledge, or simply a deeper connection. Through this process, the two minds would merge into a single entity, sharing a heightened sense of awareness and understanding. However, the deep mind merge was not without its risks. In some cases, the mental connection could become too intense, leading to emotional overwhelm or even a loss of individual identity. As such, Jack reserved this technique only for those he had built a deep level of trust and rapport with, and always approached it with caution and respect for the other person's mental and emotional well-being. Hold on a second, everyone. Let me introduce a good friend of mine, Snoop. In his notebook, Jack described the most advanced telepathic technique he had learned. It was called the merging of minds, and it involved two individuals completely merging their consciousness and becoming one entity. To perform this technique, Jack wrote that both individuals must first enter into a deep meditative state. They must then visualize a beam of light connecting their minds and focus on that connection until they feel their thoughts becoming synchronized. Next, they must visualize a sphere of white light surrounding both of their bodies and focus on that light until they feel their energies merging together. Once the merging process is complete, they should visualize themselves as one being with one unified consciousness. Jack cautioned that this technique was extremely advanced and should only be attempted by those who had already mastered the basic principles of telepathy and were experienced in meditation and visualization practices. He also stressed the importance of having a deep and trusting relationship with the individual with whom you wish to merge minds as the process can be emotionally intense and requires a strong connection between the two individuals. Despite its difficulty and potential risks, Jack believed that the merging of minds was the ultimate form of telepathic communication and offered unparalleled insight and understanding of another person's thoughts and feelings. D.A.M. wrote down extensive notes detailing the various techniques he had learned. His notes included 1. Meditation Jack emphasized the importance of meditation as a foundational practice for developing telepathic abilities. He suggested starting with just a few minutes a day and gradually working up to longer sessions. 2. Visualization Visualization was another important technique for Jack. He recommended visualizing a clear image of the person you want to communicate with and focusing on that image during meditation. 3. Connection Jack believed that establishing a strong connection with the person you want to communicate with was crucial. He suggested using a photo or personal item of the person as a focal point during meditation. 
4. Synchronization According to Jack, synchronization was key to successful telepathic communication. He recommended practicing breathing exercises with the other person to help synchronize your energy and create a stronger connection. 5. Intention Jack stressed the importance of setting a clear intention before attempting telepathic communication. He believed that clear intention helped focus the mind and create a stronger connection. 6. Practice Jack acknowledged that telepathy was a skill that required practice. He recommended regular practice sessions with a partner to develop and refine your abilities. 7. Ethics Finally, Jack emphasized the importance of using telepathy ethically and responsibly. He believed that telepathy was a powerful tool that should be used with respect and care. In Jack's notebook, he had also written down notes on how to enter a person's dream. This technique was more advanced and required a deep understanding of telepathy and astral projection. According to Jack's notes, to enter someone's dream, one needed to first establish a strong telepathic connection with the person while they were awake. This could be done through regular telepathic communication and visualization exercises. Once the telepathic connection was established, the next step was to use astral projection to enter the person's dream. This required deep relaxation and visualization techniques to enter the astral plane. Once on the astral plane, the person could then focus their intent on entering the target's dream. This required a strong visualization of the target's dream state and the ability to navigate the astral plane to reach the target's dream. Once inside the target's dream, the person could then use their telepathic abilities to communicate with the target and influence the dream state. However, it was important to be cautious and respectful when entering someone's dream, as it was a deeply personal space. Overall, this technique required a high level of skill and mastery of both telepathy and astral projection. It was not something to be taken lightly, and Jack's notes emphasized the importance of caution and respect when entering someone's dream. Jack spent many years experimenting with telepathic abilities and dream manipulation. He conducted various experiments to test the limits of his abilities and to see how he could further develop his skills. Some of the experiments he conducted are 1. Dream Sharing Jack attempted to enter the dreams of his close friends and family to see if he could interact with them and share their experiences. He found that he could enter their dreams and even influence the direction of the dream if he focused his intention strongly enough. 2. Memory Transference Jack attempted to transfer his own memories to others telepathically. He found that this was possible but required a strong mental connection between the two parties. 3. Astral Projection Jack experimented with the ability to separate his consciousness from his physical body and travel through the astral plane. He found that this was a difficult ability to master, but with practice, he was able to explore the astral plane more freely. 4. Telekinesis Jack also attempted to move objects with his mind. He found that this ability was more difficult to develop and required a lot of mental concentration and visualization. 5. Mind Reading Jack experimented with the ability to read the thoughts of others. He found that this ability was not always accurate and could be easily influenced by his own biases and assumptions. Overall, Jack's experiments with telepathy and dream manipulation helped him to better understand the limitations and possibilities of these abilities. He also learned that these abilities require constant practice and discipline to develop and master. Dian also wrote in his notebook other things. One night, Jack had a strange dream. He found a piece of paper in his pocket with a number written on it. In the dream, he took out his phone and dialed the number. To his surprise, someone picked up on the other end. When Jack woke up, he felt an inexplicable urge to call the number in real life. He hesitated at first, wondering if it was just a silly dream. But his curiosity eventually got the best of him, and he dialed the number on his phone. To his amazement, Someone answered on the other end of the line. It was a woman, and she sounded just like the person from his dream. Jack couldn't believe it. He asked her if they had spoken before, but the woman said they had never met. As they continued to talk, Jack realized that the woman was going through a difficult time. She had been feeling lost and alone, and Jack's unexpected call had brought some comfort to her. They talked for hours, and Jack felt a deep connection with her, as if they had known each other for a long time. After they hung up, Jack felt like he had just experienced something magical. He wrote about it in his notebook, trying to make sense of what had happened. He wondered if it was a coincidence, or if there was something more to it. Over time, Jack began to experiment with his dreams and telepathic abilities more and more. 
trying to understand the deeper mysteries of the universe, he learned that there was so much more to life than what could be seen on the surface, and that the power of the mind was infinite. As Jack called the number in his dream, a mysterious voice answered the call. The voice spoke in a language that Jack didn't recognize, but he somehow understood every word. The voice said, Welcome, Jack. I've been waiting for you. Jack was stunned. He didn't know what to say. He just listened as the voice continued to speak. Your abilities have been recognized, and you have been chosen to join a secret society. A society that has existed since the dawn of civilization, and whose members possess powers beyond the comprehension of ordinary people. We invite you to join us, and unlock the full potential of your mind. Jack was both excited and apprehensive. He had heard rumors of such secret societies, but had always dismissed them as myths and legends. But the voice on the phone was real, and he had to know more. The voice continued, meet us at the corner of 5th and Main at midnight, come alone, and bring nothing but your courage. Jack hung up the phone, still in shock. He couldn't believe what had just happened. He looked at the clock and saw that it was already 11.45 p.m. He quickly got dressed and headed out the door. As he walked to the meeting point, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He saw shadows moving in the alleys and heard whispers on the wind. But he kept moving forward, drawn by the mystery and intrigue of what lay ahead. When he arrived at the corner of 5th and Main, he saw a figure waiting for him in the shadows. The figure stepped forward, revealing himself to be an old man with a long beard and piercing eyes. Welcome, Jack, the old man said. I'm the keeper of the order. You have been chosen to join our ranks and learn the secrets of the universe. Are you ready? Jack nodded and the old man led him into a nearby building. They descended a staircase that seemed to go on forever, until they arrived at a large underground chamber. In the center of the chamber was a stone altar, on which lay a book bound in black leather. The old man handed the book to Jack and said, This is our most sacred text. Study it, and you will gain knowledge that few mortals possess. Jack opened the book and was immediately mesmerized by what he saw. The pages were filled with strange symbols and arcane diagrams, which seemed to come alive as he read them. He knew that he had entered a world beyond his wildest imagination, and that he would never be the same again. Jack flipped open the black book and scanned through the pages. The contents were dark and disturbing, but he couldn't help but feel drawn to them. The book was filled with detailed instructions on how to perform various forms of dark magic and alchemy. There were pages on how to summon demons and make pacts with them, as well as instructions on how to make powerful potions and elixirs. As he delved deeper into the book, Jack felt his heart racing with excitement and fear. He had always been fascinated by the dark arts, but he had never imagined that he would have access to such powerful knowledge. After reading the black book, Jack continued to delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe, he studied the principles of sacred geometry and the power of numerology. He also explored the esoteric meaning behind different colors, symbols, and patterns. Jack learned how to channel energy through his body and direct it towards specific intentions. He practiced meditation and visualization techniques to enhance his spiritual connection and expand his consciousness. As he continued to learn and grow, Jack realized that the secrets he was discovering were not meant to be kept for himself alone. He felt a calling to share his knowledge with others and to help guide them on their own journeys of self-discovery and transformation. I'll pass it back off for now. Chapter 1 of the Black Book, Jack wrote down his understanding of the principles of the universe. He started by saying that everything in the universe is made up of energy and that energy is constantly flowing and changing form. He went on to explain that this energy is both physical and spiritual in nature, and that it exists on multiple levels of reality. Jack then delved into the concept of duality, explaining that everything in the universe has an opposite or complementary aspect. He gave examples such as light and dark, positive and negative, and male and female. He noted that these aspects are not in opposition, but rather they are two parts of a whole. He then discussed the concept of vibration, stating that everything in the universe vibrates at a certain frequency. 
He explained that higher vibrational frequencies correspond to higher levels of consciousness and spirituality, while lower frequencies correspond to denser, more physical forms. Jack also wrote about the power of thought and intention, stating that our thoughts and beliefs shape our reality. He noted that our thoughts and emotions create energetic vibrations that attract similar vibrations and experiences into our lives. As Jack carefully copied down the first chapter of the Black Book, he couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement and curiosity. The text was written in an old, almost archaic language that he struggled to understand at times, but he was determined to decipher its secrets. Chapter 1 was titled The Fundamentals of the Mystical Arts, and it began by discussing the importance of cultivating a strong spiritual foundation. It spoke of the need to purify one's thoughts and emotions and to develop a deep sense of inner stillness and peace. According to the text, it was only by achieving this state of inner purity that one could begin to unlock the true power of the mystical arts. The chapter went on to discuss the principles of energy and vibration, and how they could be harnessed for magical purposes. It described various techniques for raising and directing energy, including breathwork, meditation, and visualization. As Jack read on, he came across a section that caught his attention. It spoke of the power of the mind to create reality and how thoughts and beliefs could shape the world around us. According to the text, by mastering one's thoughts and beliefs, one could not only transform one's own life but also influence the lives of others. The chapter concluded with a warning about the dangers of the mystical arts. It spoke of the importance of using one's power responsibly and of avoiding the temptation to use it for selfish or harmful purposes. It focused on techniques for mastering the mind and improving concentration. Some of the techniques included 1. Breath control. This involved deep breathing exercises designed to relax the mind and bring the body into a state of calm. Two. Visualization, this involved creating a mental image of what one wanted to achieve and focusing on it with intense concentration. 3. Meditation, this involved sitting in a quiet place and focusing on a single object or mantra in order to clear the mind and improve concentration. 4. Mindfulness, this involved being fully present in the moment and focusing on one's thoughts and emotions without judgment or distraction. 5. Mental discipline, this involved developing the ability to control one's thoughts and emotions through practice and repetition. Chapter 2 of the Black Book was titled, The Path of the Magician. Jack found it to be an incredibly detailed and complex chapter, filled with intricate instructions and diagrams. The chapter began with an introduction to the path of the magician, describing it as a journey of self-discovery and personal transformation. It emphasized the importance of discipline, focus, and perseverance in order to master the art of magic. The first section of the chapter focused on meditation and visualization techniques with detailed instructions on how to create a mental space for magical work. Jack found the descriptions of various visualization exercises to be particularly useful in enhancing his own meditative practice. The second section of the chapter discussed the use of symbols and sigils in magical practice. It explained how symbols can be used to focus and direct energy, and provided detailed instructions on how to create and charge one's own sigils. The third section of the chapter delved into the use of ritual magic, including the creation of magical circles, the invocation of entities and spirits, and the performance of various magical ceremonies. Jack was intrigued by the detailed instructions on how to create a personal ritual space and the various elements that needed to be included. The chapter goes on to describe a process of inner alchemy which involves transmuting base elements within oneself into higher, more refined elements. This process is said to lead to a greater understanding of oneself and the universe. The chapter also delves into the concept of the Philosopher's Stone which is described as a metaphor for the attainment of inner transformation and enlightenment. The stone is said to represent the purest and most refined form of the individual, and is achieved through the alchemical process of purification and transformation. The techniques described in this chapter involve various meditative and contemplative practices as well as the use of symbolic imagery and visualization. The goal is to access and transform the deep subconscious and unconscious elements of the self, ultimately leading to a greater sense of self-awareness and personal transformation. Some of the specific techniques described in this chapter include the use of specific colors and symbols to stimulate different parts of the mind and energy centers, as well as the use of mantras and affirmations to focus and direct the mind towards the desired outcome. The final section of the chapter discussed the importance of ethics in magical practice. It emphasized the need for practitioners to act with integrity and to be aware of the potential consequences of their actions. Jack found this section to be a valuable reminder of the responsibility that comes with practicing magic. Chapter 3, The Mystical Teachings of Kabbalah. 
Kabbalah, also known as Jewish mysticism, is an ancient esoteric tradition that seeks to understand the nature of God and the universe. It is a complex system of philosophy, theology, and mystical practice that has been studied and practiced by scholars and seekers for centuries. In this chapter, we will explore the key concepts of Kabbalah, including the Sephirot or divine emanations, the four worlds, and the concept of Ein Sof, the infinite and boundless nature of God. We will also delve into the practice of meditation and contemplation as a means of accessing the divine and the importance of ethical living as a path to spiritual enlightenment. Through the study and practice of Kabbalah, we can gain a deeper understanding of ourselves, our place in the universe, and the nature of the divine. By aligning ourselves with the divine attributes represented by the Sephirot, we can cultivate greater awareness and connection to the world around us and ultimately achieve a state of spiritual enlightenment. In Chapter 3, Jack delves deeper into the world of Kabbalah, focusing on the spiritual realms beyond the physical world. He explains the concept of the four worlds of existence Atzilet, Bariah, Yetzira, and Asiya and their corresponding elements, attributes, and angels. Jack goes on to describe the ten emanations or sephiroth on the tree of life and their corresponding attributes and symbols. He emphasizes the importance of understanding the relationships between the sephiroth and the paths connecting them, as well as the correspondences between the tree of life and other mystical systems such as astrology, numerology, and the Hebrew alphabet. Jack also provides practical exercises for meditating on and visualizing the Sephiroth, including specific mantras and visualizations to help practitioners connect with each sphere and its associated energies. He emphasizes the importance of regular practice and the cultivation of a strong foundation in Kabbalistic principles in order to progress on the spiritual path. Chapter 4, Alchemy and the Philosopher's Stone The fourth chapter of the Black Book delves into the fascinating world of alchemy and the pursuit of the Philosopher's Stone, the legendary substance believed to possess the power of transmutation and to confer immortality upon its discoverer. The chapter begins by exploring the history and origins of alchemy, tracing its roots back to ancient Egypt, China, and Greece. Jack notes that alchemy was not merely a primitive precursor to modern chemistry, but a holistic system of spiritual transformation that aimed to transmute the practitioner's soul along with physical matter. The chapter goes on to explain the basic principles of alchemy, such as the concept of correspondence as above, so below, the importance of the four elements earth, air, fire, and water, and the three basic stages of the alchemical process negrito, albedo, and rubido. Jack notes that the alchemical process can be seen as a metaphor for the journey of the soul, with the negrito representing the initial stage of darkness and dissolution, the albedo representing the purification and illumination of the soul, and the rubido representing the ultimate realization of the soul's potential and the attainment of spiritual gold. The chapter then explores the various substances and symbols associated with alchemy, such as mercury, sulfur, salt, the Ouroboros, and the Cajusius. Jack notes that each of these substances and symbols has both a physical and a spiritual significance, and that the true alchemist seeks to understand and harmonize both aspects. Finally, the chapter concludes with an exploration of the Philosopher's Stone itself, describing its various properties and attributes, and noting that its discovery represents the ultimate goal of the alchemist's quest. Jack notes that the Philosopher's Stone is not a physical substance, but a spiritual state of consciousness, and that its discovery requires not only knowledge and skill, but also purity of heart and intention. Chapter 5. The Tarot and Its Mysteries In this chapter, the author delves into the symbolism and meaning behind the tarot cards. The tarot is a powerful tool for divination and self-discovery, and the author provides a detailed analysis of the major arcana and the four suits of the minor arcana. The chapter begins by providing an overview of the history of tarot and its use in divination. The author explains that the tarot has its roots in ancient Egypt and has been used as a tool for divination since the Middle Ages. The author then delves into the symbolism and meaning behind the major arcana cards. Each card is described in detail, along with its corresponding symbolism and meaning. The author also provides insights into the esoteric meaning behind the tarot, including its relationship to the Kabbalah. Next, the author discusses the four suits of the minor arcana, cups, wands, pentacles, and swords. Each suit is associated with different aspects of life, such as emotions, creativity, material wealth, and mental clarity. The author explains the symbolism and meaning behind each suit and how they can be used to gain insight into different aspects of life. Finally, the author provides guidance on how to read tarot cards for oneself and others. The author emphasizes the importance of intuition and personal connection with the cards and provides tips on how to cultivate these skills. The chapter concludes with a brief discussion on the ethics of tarot reading and the responsibility that comes with wielding such a powerful tool. Overall, this chapter provides a comprehensive introduction to the tarot and its mysteries. 
The author's insights and analysis offer a valuable resource for anyone interested in learning about this powerful tool for self-discovery and divination. Chapter 6, The Path of Transformation, Alchemical Techniques for Inner Transmutation. The practice of alchemy, which involves the transformation of base materials into higher forms as a metaphor for inner spiritual transformation. The chapter starts with a discussion of the three basic principles of alchemy, salt, sulfur, and mercury, which represent the physical, spiritual, and mental aspects of a person respectively. It then goes on to describe various alchemical techniques that can be used to transform these aspects and achieve spiritual growth. One technique described in the chapter is the process of calcination, which involves subjecting oneself to intense heat or pressure in order to burn away impurities and refine the spiritual essence within. Another technique is dissolution, where one lets go of old patterns and beliefs to make way for new growth and transformation. The chapter also touches on the importance of working with the unconscious mind in the alchemical process. It describes techniques such as dream analysis and active imagination, which allow one to access and work with the symbols and archetypes of the unconscious to facilitate inner transformation. Some of the more advanced methods that Jack details in this chapter include 1. The transmutation of emotions, alchemy teaches that every emotion has its own unique energy signature and that by working with this energy one can transmute negative emotions into positive ones. Jack describes a technique where one visualizes the negative emotion as a dense, heavy energy and then imagines it being transformed into a lighter, more positive energy. 2. The creation of elixirs, alchemists were known for their ability to create powerful elixirs that could heal the body, mind, and spirit. Jack explains that these elixirs can be created by combining various herbs, plants, and other natural substances in specific ways and that they can have a profound impact on one's health and well-being. 3. The Philosopher's Stone The Philosopher's Stone is the ultimate goal of alchemy and is said to have the power to transmute base metals into gold as well as grant eternal life. While many alchemists believe the Philosopher's Stone to be a literal object, Jack explains that it is actually a metaphor for the transformation of the self and that by working with the principles of alchemy one can achieve a state of spiritual enlightenment that is akin to the Philosopher's Stone. 4. The Alchemical Wedding The Alchemical Wedding is a symbol of the union of the masculine and feminine energies within oneself and represents the ultimate goal of alchemy. Jack explains that by working with the archetypes of the anima the feminine aspect of the psyche and the animus the masculine aspect of the psyche, one can achieve a state of wholeness and integration that is necessary for spiritual growth and transformation. Overall, Chapter 6 provides a detailed exploration of the principles and practices of alchemy and offers a range of advanced techniques that can be used for personal transformation and spiritual growth. Chapter 7, The Art of Divination This chapter explores the art of divination, which is the practice of seeking knowledge of the future or the unknown by supernatural means. The chapter begins by discussing the importance of divination in human history, from the ancient times to modern times. The author explains that divination can be used for a variety of purposes, such as decision-making, problem-solving, and gaining insight into one's own psyche. The author then goes on to explain various forms of divination, including tarot reading, astrology, numerology, and scrying. Each form is explained in detail, along with its history, principles, and techniques. For example, tarot reading involves the use of a deck of cards, each with its own meaning and symbolism. The reader interprets the cards to gain insight into the future or the question at hand. The chapter also covers the importance of intuition and psychic ability in divination. The author explains that everyone has some degree of psychic ability, but it can be developed and strengthened through practice. The author provides exercises and techniques for developing intuition and psychic ability, such as meditation, visualization, and journaling. Chapter 7 also introduces the technique of La, which involves deep breathing and visualization. The practitioner begins by taking a few deep breaths, inhaling deeply and exhaling slowly. With each exhale, the practitioner visualizes releasing any tension or negative energy. Next, the practitioner begins to visualize a ball of energy or light in their solar plexus, just below the rib cage. As the practitioner inhales deeply, they imagine this ball of energy expanding and growing brighter. As they exhale, they imagine the energy spreading throughout their body, filling them with vitality and strength. With each subsequent inhale, the ball of energy grows larger and brighter, until it fills the entire body. The practitioner can then direct this energy towards a specific goal or intention, such as healing a physical ailment, manifesting a desired outcome, or simply increasing their overall sense of well-being. As with all the techniques described in the Black Book, the key to success with lies consistent practice and focus. By incorporating these techniques into his daily routine, Jack was able to achieve a level of mastery over his mind and body that few people ever attain.
Chapter 8, The Art of Visualization and Manifestation. This chapter is dedicated to the art of visualization and manifestation. Visualization is the process of creating mental images while manifestation is the act of bringing those images into physical reality. Visualization and manifestation are powerful tools that can be used to create the life you desire. Section 1, Understanding the Power of Visualization. Visualization is a technique that has been used for centuries by spiritual and religious leaders, athletes, and successful people to achieve their goals. When you visualize, you create a mental image of what you want to achieve. By focusing on this mental image, you send a message to your subconscious mind, which then works to make that image a reality. Section 2, The Benefits of Visualization. Visualization has numerous benefits. It can help reduce stress, increase motivation, improve focus and concentration, and boost self-confidence. Visualization can also help you overcome limiting beliefs and negative thought patterns which can hold you back from achieving your goals. Section 3. The Steps of Visualization There are several steps to effective visualization. The first step is to find a quiet, comfortable place where you won't be disturbed. Next, close your eyes and focus on your breathing. Once you are relaxed, create a mental image of what you want to achieve. Visualize this image in as much detail as possible, using all of your senses. Finally, allow yourself to feel the emotions associated with achieving your goal, such as joy, gratitude, or excitement. Section 4. The Law of Attraction The Law of Attraction is a powerful force that states that we attract into our lives what we focus on. This means that when you focus on positive thoughts and emotions, you will attract positive experiences into your life. By using visualization and manifestation techniques, you can harness the power of the law of attraction to create the life you desire. Section 5. Manifestation Techniques There are several manifestation techniques you can use to bring your visualizations into reality. These include affirmations, visualization boards, and gratitude journals. Affirmations are positive statements that you repeat to yourself to reinforce a positive belief or goal. Visualization boards are visual representations of your goals and desires that you create using pictures, words, and symbols. A gratitude journal is a journal where you write down things you are grateful for each day. These techniques can help you stay focused on your goals and attract positive experiences into your life. Section 6. Overcoming Obstacles Sometimes, obstacles can arise when trying to manifest your desires. These obstacles can take the form of limiting beliefs, negative thought patterns, or external challenges. It's important to stay focused on your goals and continue to use visualization and manifestation techniques even when faced with obstacles. By staying positive and persistent, you can overcome any obstacle and achieve your desired outcome. In Chapter 8, Jack delved deeper into the art of visualization and manifestation. He explained that visualization is not just about creating a mental image of what you want to manifest, but it's about feeling and experiencing it as if it has already happened. He stressed the importance of using all of the senses in the visualization process, not just visualizing a mental image. Jack also discussed the power of intention and belief in the manifestation process. He explained that intention is the driving force behind manifestation and it's important to have a clear and specific intention. He encouraged readers to focus on what they want to manifest rather than what they don't want. Another important aspect of manifestation, according to Jack, is letting go of attachment to the outcome. He explained that when we become too attached to a specific outcome, we can block the flow of abundance and limit the possibilities of what we can manifest. Instead, he advised readers to trust in the universe and its infinite possibilities and to be open to receiving in unexpected ways. Chapter 9. The Secret of Transmutation In this final chapter, the most important information is revealed the secret of transmutation. This is the process of transforming one thing into another, whether it be physical matter or intangible energy. The power of transmutation is said to be the most powerful ability a human can possess. The chapter begins with an explanation of the principles of transmutation, which include the law of correspondence, the law of vibration, and the law of attraction. These principles dictate that everything in the universe is connected, and that by changing one thing, you can change everything else. The chapter then delves into the techniques of transmutation, which include visualization, affirmation, and energy manipulation. These techniques are designed to help the practitioner focus their intent and direct their energy towards the desired outcome. The key to successful transmutation is belief and faith in one's ability to make the desired change. The chapter also explores the dangers and risks associated with transmutation. It warns against attempting to manipulate or control others through transmutation, as this can have negative consequences for both the practitioner and the subject. The chapter concludes with a call to action urging the reader to use the knowledge they have gained from the book for the betterment of themselves and the world around them. 
It reminds the reader that with great power comes great responsibility and that the true purpose of transmutation is to bring about positive change and growth. One of the key principles of transmutation is the law of correspondence, which states that as above, so below, as within, so without. This means that everything in the universe is connected and the patterns and structures found on a microcosmic level can be reflected on a macrocosmic level. Another important principle is the law of vibration, which states that everything in the universe is in a constant state of vibration. This vibration can be altered through the manipulation of energy, allowing for the transmutation of matter or energy. There are several techniques for transmutation, but they all require a high level of focus, intention, and visualization. One technique involves using the power of the mind to transmute negative energy into positive energy, which can be used to improve one's own life and the lives of others. Another technique involves the use of symbols, which can be used to access and manipulate the underlying energy of the universe. These symbols can be drawn or visualized, and their power can be amplified through the use of sound, such as chanting or singing. It is important to note that transmutation is not a quick fix or a shortcut to success. It requires dedication, discipline, and a deep understanding of the underlying principles of the universe. However, for those who are willing to put in the effort, the rewards can be profound and life-changing. The book concludes by stating that the secrets contained within it are not to be taken lightly, and that they hold immense power for those who are willing to put in the effort to master them. It urges the reader to use the knowledge contained within the book for good and to be mindful of the consequences of one's actions. Overall, Chapter 9 serves as a fitting conclusion to the Black Book, as it offers a deeper understanding of the book's underlying themes and provides practical guidance for those seeking to transform themselves and achieve their fullest potential. It urges the reader to use the knowledge contained within the book for good and to be mindful of the consequences of one's actions. Overall, Chapter 9 serves as a fitting conclusion to the Black Book, as it offers a deeper understanding of the book's underlying themes and provides practical guidance for those seeking to transform themselves and achieve their fullest potential. The Black Book is not merely a collection of words on pages, but a portal to the esoteric knowledge that lies beyond our ordinary reality. End of 9